Hello, these are my first impressions uh, with Lotus. Um, we're going to go over some of the uh, strategy that I think will end up happening on on uh, Lotus and like some of the theory of the map. We've also got some comps lined up to talk about um, and how I think they would be played. Um, yeah, we're going to just go into it. So um, it's the first three bombsite map uh, they released past Haven, uh, which was released with the original game. Um, and it has some similarities, but for the most part, it plays differently to Haven. Um, so one of the biggest things with Haven is that um, defenders were pretty much always minus one, and what that means is they needed they basically had one less player. It felt like they had one less player than attackers did, even at even. So at five v five, it felt like the defenders um, needed a sixth player to accurately, not accurately, but like to defend Haven properly. I mean, maybe not quite that drastic in all cases, but. Um, a lot of the time it felt that way, especially in stuff like ranked as well. Um, it could feel that way. Um, and I think Lotus does a better job of concealing that, which is, it feels like a very the rebomb site map problem. And I don't feel like Lotus has that problem nearly as much um, as Haven does. Um, and I think one of the biggest reasons for that is the A site, or more the leading up to the A site. Um, so you can see on the, on this like this big portion here of of uh, of the map, um, it's sort of a massive key space that the attackers and defenders will want to control. Um, it's like the pivot point of the map. Um, as you can see, like the main reason why is because that it's very easy to seem to defend these areas. You don't get much from controlling this. You don't get much from controlling this. Um, and obviously, if you control these areas, you could already control a site. Um, so you don't really need to sorry, don't really think about that right you're mainly thinking about where these barriers are um and then what space you can control in like the the most important parts of the map and clearly the lead up to a site is the most important part of the map um so how will people play this right um so i think the most obvious thing to me um looking at the map um first of all was that pivotal point and secondly was how many people are going to play where so I think we're going to have a fairly, very, fairly stacked area towards A. So to a point where I think that we're going to play three people towards A. Um, and then obviously this can be done various different ways. Um, we're going to have one person uh, going C, uh, one person going B, one person going C. Um, and uh, the way I think this is going to happen is we probably are either going to have one person towards tree with two people here um, for A. Or we're going to have two people here and one person here. We may end up with one, 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 but I doubt that quite a bit to be honest um because i don't think we want to split up that way so i think we're going to end up seeing most majority of the time we're going to see end up seeing two and one um with breaking the door at the start of the round for the defenders um to join their team fairly close to this and already take this sort of type type of space right instantly in the in the match um and then have like an open avenue rotation angle uh, where they can if they decide to go b then you have a really easy rotation from A to B, um, through sorry, sorry, uh, from A to B through this door, um, and as well as you know, you probably have control of a lot of this space if they decide to go B. Then you also have the option to flank too, um, as as the defenders. So this this gives you a lot of options. This space does, and so you really want to be able to take this as much as possible. Um, and I think we obviously going to reflect that in numbers. Um, so we might even see stuff like two people being played in here. The the B defender might end up playing in here. Um, so I will show you what, what, like some some of the comps that probably will be able to do that. Um, I, I will be looking into that stuff soon. Uh, B is a fairly interesting site. It has a lot of elevation. You can probably see on on the on the map here. It's got a lot of elevation. Um, ways to get up onto this thing, and there's a box over here. A um, very interesting map. It's very closed. Um, very like a small map. A uh, small map. So small site. It's actually the biggest map in the game. Actually, I think point here, point here is 120 meters. Um, so it's quite a while, and it's, I think that's bigger than Haven. So um, it's very weird that all the sites are fairly compact. A is the biggest site, and it's also the most like compact wall-wise as well, in my opinion. So because obviously they have like open spaces, these ones do, and there's only one open space for A, and they're very enclosed at the back compared to the other sites. Um, at least to me, maybe not actually in reality. Looking at Vadopan, that's what it looks like actually, but maybe not in reality. Um, but my my point is um spoil the mumbling and 
um, going off topic, is uh, that the sites are small. So this favors a lot of um, agents that have good ultimates that can cover this, or not even ultimates, some abilities that can cover the whole site. I mean, I'll talk about them as well. Um, and I guess we'll go over, go on to the agile comps now. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually, no, we won't, we won't, we won't. Um, we're going to talk about some of the barriers. Um, so there's a barrier here, there's a barrier here, barrier here for attack. Um, and there's a barrier here, barrier here, uh, there's a barrier at the door, there's a barrier here, and there's a barrier here. So these are all the barriers, all, all the stuff in white. I'm pretty, pretty sure to do it in blue. Um, but essentially, I know, so let, me do the, let me do the orbs in like yellow. So there's orb here, orb here, and orb here, I think. So overall, I think the orbs um, are... Obviously, it's not going to be fully balanced, right? Because there's three and there's two sides. Um, so, and I think... Overall, I mean, it might be a bit balanced. I mean, there's an argument to be made that defense could probably attack this orb. Um, defense probably have this orb for free, and this one's also quite contestable. But I think this is more defense sided. So, sorry, attack sided. This this orb. So we are actually. I think I think it is pretty balanced overall because this orb I think is a lot of contention. I would say that attack is probably going to get this more than defense, just because of the value of this area is pretty low, um, for defense to invest in. Um, so. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen with, with that sort of stuff. And the barriers are quite important overall, especially attack ones, because defense are going to be on, on uh, wanting to take space in this map, at least towards A. So this barrier is like probably the most important barrier to talk about. Um, so we're going to talk about it. So we want to be able to, uh, as a defense, you want to be able to like control this area. And the best way to do that is at the start of the round, find ways to stop them from not really getting into this sort of space. Because then they can start, you know, setting up from this space to take more space. So you have to kind of use this barrier to your advantage, knowing this barrier is here at the start of the round, right? And we'll we'll look into that as well as I talk about some comps, um, which we're going to going to do now. Um, so I'm going to zoom in and we're going to talk about all the comps. Um, so um, the first comp is a no duelist comp with chamber, which I think is a potential comp. To happen uh, obviously all these for me are potential comps that could happen there are some definitely wilder than others um and i feel like these are all kind of like maybe we'll maybe see these comps at least once this one we might see but i doubt it but i wanted to include it because i thought it was an interesting comp at the very least um so um chamber killjoy ko uh fade and omen i'm going to talk about i'm going to put them on the map where, where I think they would go. I'm not sure how much I've zoomed in. Oh, I've zoomed in quite a bit. Okay, anyway. Um, so, uh, why am I on the pen? Okay. So, I think Chamber is going to end up going towards C uh, with this comp, but I don't 100% know, um, obviously, um, what will actually happen if this comp is played. Um, but I think Hildroy has a really good uh, A site, and so, so does she also has a good C site. I think Chamber's really good on C site, so I think he's going to be playing C on defense, and I think Hildroy's going to be on A. And then we're going to have um, a mid-centric type of hold, or oh, sorry, type of take, where we're going to have um, like maybe KO or like KO and Fade here, we're going to have Omen here. Um, and Omen's going to be providing a smoke. Uh, I can't get this. We're providing a smoke here, and then Fade, KO, and Killjoy are actually going to be taking this space with KO, I mean, sorry, Killjoy using her um, utility as offensive um, as possible. So using Turret to kind of defend this line um, as uh, stuff. So using turret to kind of defend this line, uh, throwing uh, nano swarms to, to sort of stop people from coming through uh, this smoke for free, off the turret, Fade using her, her um, haunt like behind here to stop people from coming at the thing for free, if they maybe smoke this, they, they have a siphon, they siphon cage this to get across, um, that sort of stuff can't happen if Fade is there, and K was also there to delay the push, so he can like zero point them, uh, maybe like this or something, um, to you know, delay them for eight seconds, or if they start to push out, then he can um, make the uh, the push have less uh, utility invested. That sort of stuff, right? Um, so that's one comp. Um, that's that's just defense as well. So on attack, um, you can sort of see that these these three players. Sorry, I can't. Okay, these three players are going to be trying to go towards A majority of the time with all their utility. Um, while Chamber and Killjoy are probably going to be looking at um, defending extremities or or um, sort of just controlling these portions of the map, probably actually have Chamber like this and Killjoy like this. Um, and Killjoy would have probably a turret watching this and Chamber may be able to join this as well um, to helpfully try and outnumber the A players. 
Um, because a Kildrew can just put a turret like this, and then she can also just be defending this. Um, she might also put a alarm bot here as well, and then she can like sort of sit back over here. Um, depends on the range of stuff, but she does have the advantage over um chamber at least with the trap. Um, and Cipher can do this fairly easily, but the problem is Cipher doesn't have good traps on defense. So while he is decent on attack, I think he's pretty bad on defense, which is crazy for Cipher to say it's a bit Cipher. Okay, that's going to be one comp. I'm not sure how comprehensively I um, explained the stuff there, but I want to move on uh, as fast as possible to um, get make sure I can get all the comps in um, into a reasonable time. Let me also have a drink. Okay, um, next comp is uh, Jet, Viper, KO, Sova, and Omen. Um, so this this comp, uh, let me just move all these up. Yeah, I've used them all. Um, doesn't matter if I've messed up the order. Um, so this comp is going to be um, no Sentinel, uh, but it it uses Viper like a Sentinel. So very similar to how you'd see like Fnatic play Bind, um, where the Viper would be sort of playing a Sentinel esque role. Um, and talking about the, I would talk about defense first. And when I'm thinking about strats, and then I look at um, attack, it probably should be the other way around actually, but that's the way I do it anyway. Um, and I'm going to send these three players towards A, um, and I would actually have the jet towards C. Uh, she would have an operator, uh, and she would just be watching this angle um, with an operator with a with a dash. She obviously do, is not as good at this as Chamber, so I could see Chamber taking this role. Um, I actually think Chamber is good on this map, despite his nerfs. Um, the reason being is because he just have he has this as well, so he has actually a good trap. Uh, sorry, a good a good rendezvous, and you can just place a trap here behind the mound of uh, of uh, terrain here, um, to defend this whole area. Um, so I actually think he has good merit on this C play. So she she can be replaced very easily by Chamber here. The thing is, is that she, I think she's very good at attacking on this map, especially towards C. Um, so we're gonna have a look at that as well. Um, actually, I shouldn't. That should thing. Um. That's what I'm kind of seeing like this. We may end up having the open like this or like this, um, but I, I think he also is useful towards A because he can sit here in Paranoia, so I actually like him to be in with the Viper like this. And we have a uh, Sofer and Ko here, so Ko is going to play like the Duelist type role like he, you have seen him play it a lot. So he would have, he would send the knife early. We would also have a Viper Wall. So there's two Viper Walls you can do. Um, I will actually be doing a Viper Guide on Lotus as my next uh, video probably, or one of my next videos. Um, in the future anyway so there's there's two walls that you can do right there's, so there's one similar to this i'm not quite sure exactly where i think this wall is the best one so far um from this position at least so let me just move this. um so what this does is it just stops them from taking too much space coming out the barrier um and the, this one's a bit safer so you can also choose a different one which i've seen a lot of people do as well or some people do as well not a lot not a lot but some people so this one is pretty good because of what it does is it sort of cuts off some of B as well, so you can defend B pretty easily. Um, and they may have to like kind of get through two walls and stuff like that. Especially good as well, this one is, if you have like, maybe you're not the one defending it, and you have an omen instead. And maybe the omen can, can set up for paranoia like this, um, off like footsteps and stuff like that. Um, and they're, they're going to be decayed. Um, and it's really, really good at defending two areas at once, this this, uh, this wall is, as opposed to this wall, which is, in my opinion, slightly better. Um, at defending this position because they won't just run past it with the barrier. Um, with this one, there's a chance they may just decide to commit past it um, when the barrier drops. Um, so that's the disadvantage to that one. Um, and yeah, that's basically uh, this comp here. Let me get Jay again. Um, let me look at attack real quick. So attack, they're actually. I think this this comp is pretty good at C. I also think this comp is pretty good at taking the A space. But we're gonna look at the C space because we've already looked at the A space quite a bit. Um, so we're going to look at the C. So C is one of those. So this is all um, this point. This um, site is elevated. So anyone that can like cut the space and get into the elevation fast is pretty good. Right. And that's why I think Neon eventually is also pretty good, too, because she can actually get around this space pretty fast without having the um, elevate with the without having the uh, like updraft or TP or something. And there's two players. There's two uh, agents on this on this uh, comp that can cut space like Oban and Jet. So they can updraft and uh, they can up, smoke updraft uh, and dash on top. They can also DP. So they have two two way two agents that can do this. They also have more than enough util to take the space. So you can have like a viper wall, um, cutting through the space as well, like from this position, 
You can also, um, there's probably other positions, but you can do something like this, or sorry, sorry, something like this. That cuts the space, so you can go right like this, you need to be careful about this pocket though, so maybe you do something like this. Um, and then you, you can get two players onto the site fairly easily. Jet can also just dash on and plant, um, or maybe T or maybe Owen could TP on, uh, on TP on plant, and then you can play post plant, although I wouldn't advise that because I don't think C is a very good post plant position. Um, has very good post plan positioning unless you manage to get like a flank with two players or something. Um, I don't see that happening. Sova has some good darts that he can throw, uh, throw that he can uh, shoot as well. And um, importantly for Ko, basically every site, um, why I think Ko is good, Ko can cover the whole site with with zero points as long as he knows where to throw the knife. So this is like full. So let me get rid of this. This is fully covered. Like look at that. It's fully covered. Fully covered. Fully covered, right? So, so you can actually get like majority of the site as long as you kind of know where to place them. Um, and obviously in game, like it's maybe a bit different. You need to like get some lineups and stuff like that. But as soon as they're figured out, then he's going to be immensely strong. I think he already is immensely strong on this site, on this site, on this map. Um, and I think that's it for this comp. Very much that they have a lot of options because they have that C option a lot more than uh, at least the previous comp. Um, and uh, the next comp we're going to look at is. Uh, let me just. Uh, so we have uh, Neon, uh, Hilljoy, Breach, Fade, and Astra. This is the first time we're going to see Astra. Um, and I think Astra is really good on this map um, as well because uh, she has a lot of tools to help her take space, um, especially on maps like Haven. She was also picked a lot um, when she was uh, unnerfed. Um, and I think people are slowly getting back to realizing. I mean, not even slowly back, really, but uh, they're slowly realizing, or they're realizing that Astra is good. Uh, still, despite the nerf that she uh, had before. Um, so Astra obviously um, has all these nice stars like Gravity Well to control this area. She has Neb um, the Neb what's it called? Nova Pulse. She also has the Smokes as well. Um, and Cosmic Divide in general on this map is really, really strong, right? Because the wall is very, very strong too. Like uh, in defense, I can imagine as defenders, this wall, like something like this, isn't even like bad to do at the start of the round. Um, to just defend and just take this space, right? To just take the space very early away from the attackers. Um, so I think she has a lot of options as, as an individual agent. And if you combine this with stuff like Neon and, and Breach, which you've seen a lot on Fracture, so I won't talk about too much about the the um, the synergy they have. Um, but essentially, Neon and Breach have a very good synergy where they can uh, stun uh, like um, very um, like a lot of space and catch people off guard, right? And this can be combined well with, with some of these agents. I actually think that... Actually, maybe we made a mistake here. Maybe this should be Sova. Um, but I have also done something similar here. But this could easily be Sova as well. Um, but Fade is really good at taking the sites with her ult. That's the reason why I thought it might be nice here to have the, the multifaceted um, ult. So you have the Breach ult and you have the Fade ult. So you can use both to take one round or you can use them over the course of rounds to set up the Neon. Um, and... Neon's very good at taking, uh, basically, the space that is set up for her by Breach and, and Fade. Um, and she can do some setup for herself. The Killjoy would also, in this situation, be on C by, by herself. You'd have the Astro on B, and then you would have um, the Neon Breach play through this area while Fade probably breaks the door and joins them. Or she goes through here, and you don't break the door. Um, you can do kind of what you want. I'm still on the fence whether breaking the door is, the, is actually good as defense, to then have this inside track to B. Um, I don't 100% know yet, um, but I think it's a good... Thing to test at least um and that's what i'm doing doing with it uh, attack wise i'm not going to go over them too much because i've gone over a lot of it but neon breach is fairly straightforward attack wise you just stun areas and neon's going to be able to run in fairly fast through c or through a uh, a tree even b as well she's just going to run faster than she's neon um and astra is also going to be able to set up set them up as well so it's all about setting up neon um, in that same vein we're going to have a comp that is all about setting up yoru um, which is the final comp. I'm running out of breath. Jesus, I've never taught this much. I have taught this much before, but I'm doing it quite fast. Okay, so um, this comp is all about setting up Yoru uh, with the Breach, with the Sova, and with the Harbour. The Killjoy is simply there to basically on attack more like stalling um, and the same with on defense. Like she's there for the type of stalling that I wanted to do. So on C, she'll, she'll reside. Don't forget that... Uh, don't forget. You can also replace... Anytime I think I sent Killjoy C... I feel like I could technically replace her with Chamber on defense. It's just whether Chamber's good enough on attack. Because I think Killjoy is actually good on both uh, both uh, sides on this map. 
Um, and I don't think she's very replaceable on attack compared to the other two Sentinels. The only uh, agent that can replace her on attack in her role is Viper to me. That's the only reason why um, Kildra is in like, the majority of the comps and only replaced by Viper. Um, is because attack is very, very weird without a Killjoy or a Viper taking up that role. Um, at least to me, obviously that could be wrong um, and could be shown to me wrong. Uh, could, could be shown to be wrong when competitive play is there or when I just you know find out um, what people are doing in high relo and, and see how they're playing it um, and see like I just don't have the reasoning yet to justify not playing Killjoy or Viper in that role. Um, and if, what I do, when I do, I'll, I'll, I'll change my opinion. I'm assuming. Um, but so we'll have the, the, the Kildra on C, we'll have Breach and Yoru play A, we'll also have Silver play A, and we have Harbor play in here. Um, so the Breach is actually has the ability to play in here as well, so we can have it like this instead. Um, and th this comp isn't particularly good at defending B, so what we're going to do is we're going to have an alarm bot here, and we're going to have a turret um, sort of like, I don't know quite know where to put it either, I think it's about here, because then it defends the door as well, but that also makes it vulnerable, so what you can do is you can just put it here. Um, you can also swap these things around, and the Kildra is going to play off like Nano Swarming, um, which is also pretty good over here as well. I was playing Lotus, um, the game mode, like the 24-7 one, um, and I was playing against a Killjoy that kept doing, or didn't keep doing, but she she did some setups like this where she would have um, a Death Trap in C here, and she would have had one in Tree as well um, to catch people off guard as well. I think Killjoy is very strong on this map in general, and you're going to be kind of doing things like that. Um, to defend B and C, but then the other four players can attack A. So you're going to have um, Silver Recon, you're going to have Breach Duns to sort of um, uh, stop the attackers from coming out properly. Um, and when, there are, when they are out, you can send in uh, Yoru with a gate crash um, and uh, blindside them at the back. Um, you can also use his ult um, to take space as well, and Breach is really good with his ult as well because you can ping where you want the Breach to stun, and the Breach will be able to stun the person, and then you'll be able to come out your gate crash, um, or not gate crash, come out your dimensional drift, um, your ult, um, and kill them. Um, Harbor's also the one I haven't mentioned really. I mean, I haven't mentioned Yoru either, but um, Yoru is not straightforward, but he is one that um, I don't need to explain too much because he's the one being set up. Um, so I feel like I need to explain the setup more, if that makes sense. Um, so with Harbour, um, he's kind of like... Uh, I, I want to say he's a combination of Viper and Brim, and he has his own flair to him. So the reason why he's a combination of those two agents um, is because, well, he, he misses one thing out, which is like their threat, which is which are, what a, a bomb threat or something like that. Uh, which is re really the, how good they are in post-plant and that sort of stuff, because Brim has Orbital Strike and Molly, Viper has her Mollies as well, and her Viper Pit, and Harbour does lack that, but he has it on the flip side where he's able to retake um, a lot easier, um, and that's what like, Harbour's difference is to me, um, and the reason why I pair him with those two, or like talk about him in comparison with those two, is because of the walls that he sets up, that are very similar to Viper's type of control, um, and the brim, he um, he sort of like emulates sort of a, the the um, the speed that brim has. Obviously, not quite with the stim is just like really really good. Um, but Harbour's quite a fast agent, um, very very good taking space quickly, and so is brim. So that's the reason why I'm comparing those two as well, uh, those two together. Um, so with with a Harbour, you can easily use like if you just come out this barrier, you can easily use a cascade, you just block this if they don't come out instantly. Um, you can also do it like this too. Bear in mind, it does give them more space, but if they feel comfortable to cross, having the combination of, of, this, of the Sova, you know, you can send a recon at the back. If they don't shoot it, you can probably get killed through the wall or stuff like that, right? The idea is to take as much space as possible um, initially, so then you can take more space um, when you've taken the, these sort of positions, right? When you've taken these positions, then it's a lot easier for you to take more. Um, and I think... Uh, not Viper. I think... Uh, Harbour allows you to do that on this map, uh, especially towards A. I don't 100% know how strong he would be um, on the other parts of the map. Um, it's very weird that his uh, his high tide doesn't have the wall, doesn't have the wall at least. I guess they're trying to figure out how to get that to work on other uh, tracker or other plant, sorry. Um, and his reckoning is very also very good at uh, controlling this area if you want to do that. It also moves forward slightly, so you can use it like this. Um, 
Well, I guess you can use it like this and fully cover the area already. Probably would be better. You can do stuff like this, and then I can't really enter very easily. Um, you can also use the cove as well to just be a little bubble. What I would also do when you when you're supporting the Yoru, you can basically find a way to put it on his uh, on his gate crash, and then you can TP without getting shot instantly. Um, or and then he can like use the gate crash to his advantage, especially if you can if you can combine it with uh, a high tide. Sorry, a high tide. So there's a, basically let me get Viper's wall to illustrate this properly. Um, so if you combine this with a, you know one of your walls, you can put it like this, right? Um, and what it will do is will defend the Yoru even more, so they can't just like shoot him, even if they do destroy the the cove. Um, so it's all about supporting the Yoru. This comp is, and I think Harbor's very good at supporting Yoru. Um, I don't think that is even a Lotus thing. It's a, a thing on every map. Um, it was a thing on Bind, in my opinion. Um, at some at some point, it might have been if Bind would have stayed in the in the in the meta. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the end of the video. Uh, I talked about uh, four comps. I talked about and um, the theory at the start. The theory is more important than the comps, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the end of the video. So uh, I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content, then um, please subscribe. But I'm going to be uh, releasing a lot of Lotus content um, over the next coming weeks. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.